Third time in two years. It's Matt Derry and James Yarko on a crossover. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Thursday crossover brought to you by Prize Picks. Matt Derry, Locked On Lions. James Yarko, Locked On Bucks. Third time in two years, like we said. These two teams faced each other twice last year, including in the playoffs. Now, a couple of 1 0 teams at Ford Field Sunday at 1 o'clock. And again, Locked On Lions and Locked On Bucks. And the crossover Thursday brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play $5. Lions off a Sunday night win over the Rams. Bucks uh, battered and bruised the Commanders. James, great to see you. And uh, here we go again, my friend. Yeah, I mean, you you said three times in two years. If you think about it, it's three times in eleven months. Yes, the last, sure. the first of these three came in October, and that was the the Buccaneers creamsicle throwback game. Uh, Detroit just dominated that one, and then of course the the divisional round. So yeah, here we go again. It's it's the Lions and the Bucks. It's the the old black and blue division all over again. Tell us about biggest stories with the Bucs. What's going on in Tampa? How are they feeling? It, it seems like things are good. And some injuries, though, you're worried about, right? Yeah, I'd say the, the biggest story for the Buccaneers, at least on the offensive side of the ball, is how efficient Baker Mayfield was in week one with new offensive coordinator Liam Cohen. He was the FedEx Air Player of the Week, went 24 for 30 for 289 and four touchdowns. An absolutely phenomenal performance from Baker Mayfield. And a big part of that, is because they finally have a legitimate wide receiver three. If you go back to last year and you think, you know, there was Mike Evans, there was Chris Godwin, and there really wasn't much else. Now they have Jalen McMillan, a a guy who is going to be a star in the NFL. He has everything that you look for in a wide receiver. Now that takes a little bit of the pressure off Mike, a little bit of the pressure off of Chris, and then they add Bucky Irving in the backfield as well, and he can do everything that Rashad can do. He can run the ball. He can pick up blitzes. He can make plays out of the backfield as a pass catcher, and all of these things have now really put Baker Mayfield into a comfortable spot, and that was on full display against Washington. So the Bucks are looking to really try to make that, uh, you know, a continuous thing week in and week out. But then you mentioned it on the defensive side of the ball. It's the injuries. They came in against the Washington commanders, missing two of their starting defensive linemen in Kalijah Cansey and Logan Hall. They already had one of their reserves placed on injured reserve in Ernest Brown. So, you know, Kalijah Cansey injured that calf that, that kept him out a little bit at the start of last season. Logan Hall luckily was back at practice on Wednesday, but then during the game, you lose Zion McCollum. He is the starting outside corner after they traded Carlton Davis to the Detroit Lions. He suffers a concussion and he misses the game. He was back in a non-contact injury or a non-contact jersey on Wednesday. You lose Josh Hayes, who's more of a special teamer than he is a, a weapon on the defensive side of the ball. But then you lose Zion's backup, Bryce Hall, for the season. A nasty, gruesome injury for those that those Lions fans that didn't see the game because yeah. you probably got stuck watching Dallas and uh, and Cleveland. The the announcers on Fox actually said. It was so gruesome, we're not going to show a replay. He suffered a dislocated ankle and a broken fibia. So the Bucs have to go out. They signed Keenan Isaac, who was on their team in preseason. He was cut. They bring him back. But the biggest loss of all is Antoine Winfield Jr. And in a game against the Detroit Lions, when you have Amon Ross St. Brown, when you have the speed of Jamison Williams, when you have Sam Laporta, one of the best tight ends in the NFL, losing the heart and soul of your defense and the best safety in the NFL is a crucial, crucial loss. So the the big thing around the Bucs is how do they overcome all these injuries? Is Zion going to be able to clear concussion protocol or now are they going to have to piecemeal something together opposite op- oh, Here we lost you. You got your uh can you unmute? Unmute my I think we got you. What happened there? There you go. Go ahead, James. Right, so sorry about that. Um, my, uh, you know, 
my sound no no idea why just randomly turned off so. all good keep going my brother keep going uh i don't even remember where i was um, <laughs> you were talking about um you were talking about zion the, and yeah and then those guys and who yeah. steps up now on that uh in that secondary okay so yeah christian isian came in to to fill in for zion mccullum on the outside after Bryce Hall went down with injury, he's going to be back at safety because Antoine Winfield Jr. is out. So it's going to be him and Jordan Whitehead. So the big question is, how are they going to fill that void on the outside? It, it seems highly unlikely that it's going to be rookie Tyke Smith. He's much better suited for the slot. You have Tavier Thomas there who can who says that he can bounce back and forth between the two. He's primarily a slot corner. Like I mentioned, they bring back Keenan Isaac, they have an undrafted rookie in Tyreek Funderburk, who was a game day inactive against Washington. He's going to have to be suited up and ready to go. Even Mike Evans during the game against Washington said, I've played corner before. I got an interception in the Pro oh, Bowl. I'll go in and play. No, no, uh, no, no. Well, don't do that. <laughs> which, <laughs> right, which, uh, of course, nobody wants to see because you, know, you don't want to risk the, the injury there. And, and let's be honest, for as great as Mike Evans is, and he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, he's not going to be a good corner. And his interception came off to Sean Watson, which is not nearly as impressive as it would have been, <laughs> you know, four or five years ago. So, yeah, the the injury problems seemed to have Todd Bowles a little on edge on Wednesday when he was speaking to the media. You know, you go back to last week and he was pounding the podium screaming, I'm excited. I saw he was that. very yeah. yeah, he was very morose. He was very short. He was very kind of um perturbed, I guess is the best way to put it, with the media. So it's it's a matter of can can Bowles scheme overcome the injuries and can the offense replicate what they did against Washington against a better defense and, and really be able to kind of win a, what I think is going to end up being a shootout with the Detroit lions. Give me like a minute on this. This is interesting. They traded Carlton Davis to the lions mm -hmm. and it's kind of ironic now that they're so banged up in the secondary and probably could use him. But what were your thoughts on the Davis deal? And also, how about this irony now that they're so banged up they could probably they could probably use them i think the the davis deal came to fruition in my opinion because davis dealt with injury in 2023 and so did jamel dean so zion mccullum got a lot of opportunity to go out on the field and of course the buccaneers were strapped for cash in the off season i think if jamel dean's contract wasn't structured in the way that it was he would have been up for trade as well i guess and it would have been a choice between you know can they get a deal done for dean or can they get a deal done for davis instead they would have taken on so much dead money for jamel dean that they kind of had to let carlton go and they restructured some things but that was a big part of it and you look at what they did they made tristan Wirfs the highest paid offensive lineman in the league they made antoine winfield jr the highest paid defensive back in nfl history they signed mike evans they signed baker mayfield so it, it was a davis was kind of a victim of circumstance and i think had zion not played as well as he did last year that they probably would have tried to restructure and fix some things and, and move some money around to keep Carlton Davis. But uh, you know, it's, you're right. It is kind of ironic and that now the bucks are, are really beat up at the corner spot, but to be fair, Davis and Jamel Dean have missed more than their fair share of time. So it, it's more than likely that Davis or Dean would have been one of the ones that got hurt on, on Sunday anyway. Biggest story, uh, biggest storylines for the Lions. We will get to that coming up next. Good game this Sunday. Lions and Bucks are going at it once again, a rematch of last year's playoffs. We'll get to the Lions next here on Thursday Crossover, brought to you by Prize Picks. And we all want we want to welcome in our friends at DoorDash to the Locked On Podcast Network. Great to have them back. Football is finally back, too, which means it's time to order your favorite game day food, snacks, and drinks on DoorDash without missing a play. What's your best piece of game day advice for fellow fans? Well, what about what about that time that you were at your buddy's house and he had no food and no drinks and nothing? How could DoorDash have come to the rescue? It's simple. They do. 
They do. There's all sorts of game day essentials that you need. You want wings. You can get them from DoorDash. You want burgers, DoorDash. Uh, you need some, some beverages, some cold drinks. You can get them from DoorDash. It is phenomenal. Seriously. Use promo code LOCKEDFALL, F-A-L-L-24, for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Promo is not valid for orders containing alcohol. DoorDash, your door to game day, uh, game day, game day greatness. Your door to more. Download the DoorDash app now. Everybody's got it, Door, but if you don't, download it now to order up your game day favorites. Must be 21 years or older to get alcohol. Drink responsibly. Alcohol available only in select markets. And Lockdown Lions and Lockdown Bucks today also brought to you by our friends at Hymns Men. When you leave the house, it's phone, wallet, keys, just like Adam Sandler once said. Now, how's your hair look? If you're experiencing hair loss, you may not want to be so confident stepping outside your door. It's time to get that confidence back and restore your hair with Hims. Real talk. The only thing worse than losing your hair is waiting forever to grow it back. Hims provides access to a range of hair loss treatments that work all from the comfort of your couch. They make treating hair loss simple with doctor-trusted treatment options and clinically proven ingredients like finasteride and minoxidil that can regrow hair in as little as three to six months. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on NFL. That's hymns, H I M S.com slash locked on for your personalized hair loss treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on NFL. Results vary based on studies of topical and oral minoxidil. Restrictions of uh, prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. James Yarko from Locked On Bucks, Matt Derry Locked On Lions. It's the Lions and Bucks from Ford Field in a rematch of the divisional playoff round uh, last year. We didn't even, you and I haven't even talked since that game, but it's funny. People have said, well, the Lions uh, you know, are bringing the band back. They really are, James. And I think that the biggest storyline for this game is, is that well, these two teams look very similar outside of what you said about the Bucks secondary. And I think the Lions secondary is better with Carlton Davis. But I thought Baker Mayfield, before we get to this Lions stuff, I thought Mayfield played well last year in that playoff game. It wasn't his fault they lost. Yeah, I mean, he had the the bad interception at the at the at very the end. end. But right. you know, early on, it looked like Detroit was going to kind of run away with it. Yeah, Jamel Dean, who I just talked a lot about, he he dropped an interception on Detroit's opening drive that you know could have kept points off the board for Detroit and really could have started the Bucks out hot. Chase McLaughlin missed a field goal, which was very uncharacteristic given how he had played last year, but. That was a that was an epic game. You know, it was it was back and forth. And then all of a sudden, both teams are throwing haymakers and the balls in Baker's hands with a chance to, to try to move down the field and tie it up. So hopefully we get another, you know, instant classic in, in this one, because I get the feeling you and I might be talking again come January. <laughs> You know, the biggest storyline here, and it's simple, the Lions didn't even play that well. I know you watched the game Sunday night. Uh, it's a good Rams team. They were very banged up. I said on my show on Wednesday, Stafford played one heck of a game the more I watched the tape. But the Lions feel like, wow, Amon Ross St. Brown caught three balls for 13 yards. Sam Laporta really wasn't a part of the offense. Jared Goff had his lowest PFF grade he's had in years. And yet they still won. So I think the Lions feel like, and I think the fans feel like, this team didn't play all that well Sunday night. Escape with a win. And now can they put it all together? And like you were saying, with a banged up secondary, maybe now we start to see that Ben Johnson offense without the rust of no preseason Lions didn't play any of their regulars in the preseason, kind of get back to doing what the Lions do at home, which is a track meet and certainly getting that offense going uh, defensively. Aiden Hutchinson was unreal. The D line played very well. Uh, maybe not the, the, you know, a ton of sacks or anything on Stafford, but, uh, and again, the story has been the secondary you, you upgrade upgrade with Terry on Arnold and it's Ray straw from the draft. Certainly Carlton Davis and free agency and Amik Robertson. It's a different looking corner group that Baker Mayfield saw, like you said, just, just a handful of months ago. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And of course, I got to shout out my guy, Kirby Joseph. As, as yeah. the viewers can see, I, I am an Illini till I die. Um, and, and yeah, they they may not have gotten a lot of sacks on, on Matthew Stafford, but they sure made him feel 
their presence. I mean, Stafford yeah. was gimping around pretty bad. He was beat up in that game. And, you know, Baker is not shy from, you know, absorbing the contact or, or taking the hits. And, you know, a lot of times he'll get rid of the ball. I don't think there was anybody in the NFL last year better at escaping sacks than he was. And he still was sacked 40 times. Uh, you can even go back and watch that Washington game. He was sacked once, but he escaped probably six or seven others and, and made great plays down the field. So you're right. There, there is, there are some differences here between the team that they faced uh, in January and the, and the team that they're going to face here. My, my big thing, and I'm curious your thought, you, you wanted my thoughts on the Davis trade. I'm curious your thoughts. You know, Davis is, is going to play an integral role for the Lions defense in this one and, and kind of knowing Davis and, and how he operates. You think he might actually be a little bit more of a, detri a detriment trying to, you know, make sure that he's manning up on on Mike Evans and prove to the Bucks that, you know, hey, you got rid of the wrong guy and, and I'm going to make you pay for it. You know, I, I don't know. You know, obviously he's played one game. You know, yeah. and it's not like he's constantly being interviewed. I've heard some of the stuff he says, and he's a veteran guy, and they needed him. I didn't love the return at the time, especially because of the injuries. Uh, talking to your to your, our, our mutual buddy Trevor Sikama about it, he didn't love it either. But the more I thought about it, <laughs> you looked at last year's corners that started in that playoff game against the Bucks: Cam Sutton, Kendall Vildor, Will Harris. Uh, uh, you know, guys like Jerry Jacobs played last year. I mean, the Lions really needed to upgrade, and this was a move they had to make. And Carlton Davis playing in a free agency year now, contract year, and if he's healthy, can can definitely be an upgrade. So I don't know if he's going to overcompensate or go for a pick where he should have just maybe taken a five yard gain on an out play and, and tackle the guy. And don't know if he'll do that, but I I am intrigued to see, like you said, how that matchup will go. I mean, they practiced together how many years? Davis versus um, uh, Mike Evans, who's just one of the best. And now they get to go at it. I mean, Mike Evans eight against the Lions last year in that playoff game. Yeah, uh, I don't think it'll be as, as, as smooth sailing this time around because they've upgraded there. And now Brian Branch moves back to safety. He played a really lousy game Sunday night. He'll be much better. I like him in that safety role. So I think the Lions will play better this week. I, I don't, there were some mistakes made, but again, I think a lot of it was, was certainly rust, you know? Yeah. And one of the things that I'll say is when Carlton Davis is on, he is on and, and you will watch him and say, oh, my gosh, I am so glad that the Lions traded for this guy. But when he's off, it's a long day. Yeah, he he was one of the big reasons that the Bucs lost to the Houston Texans when C.J. Stroud had that massive five touchdown comeback. And uh, yeah, he had a he had a rough day out there. But, you know, on the flip side, like I said, when he's on. Jamar Chase gave an interview. Um, I believe yeah. it was after his second season, and they said, "Who's the toughest quarter you face?" He said, "Carlton Davis. That guy is is absolutely incredible." So I'm really interested to see how Davis plays. I'm not sure how often he'll line up against Mike. You know, it, it, he'll kind of shift around and move around. I don't know if he'll be on Godwin very much. He's not really a slot kind of guy. Uh, you know, he'll he'll get his shot against the rookie McMillan. But you know, I I'm not under the impression that that Davis is going to shadow Mike all over the field. But that's definitely kind of the the marquee matchup that I think Bucks fans are going to be watching is Carlton Davis versus whoever the Bucks wide receiver is. Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a lot of fun, and these are two good teams, so this should uh, should definitely be good. All right, coming up next, let's talk about some keys. What do the Bucks need to do to win? What do the Lions need to do to win? We'll do our predictions as well here on a Thursday. Locked on Lions and Locked on Bucks, the crossover brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. We got to tell you, though, about our friends at FanDuel as well. You've heard us talk about a lot about FanDuel. Well, it's because it's America's number one sports book. Well, we got something a little different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment. You can cancel anytime. If that's not enough, be sure to check out FanDuel's profit boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's double your winnings for all of Sunday 915. That's this Sunday. Pre-game money line bets, profit boost. They're going to start live Thursday night for the game. 
That's tonight. View your account page now to learn more about your boost. Go to FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. Matt and James locked on lines, locked on Bucks. Bucks coming to Ford Field, just like they did last year for the playoff game, which turned out to be a, a great football game. All right, James, what do the Bucks got to do to win? What do you see as some keys here as how they get this thing done? First and foremost, Baker Mayfield has got to be as accurate and efficient as he was against Washington. Chris Godwin still needs to be the focal point of the offense, and they have got to shut down Amon Ra St. Brown. So Baker Mayfield on Sunday went 24 for 30, 289, four touchdowns. But here's where it really got interesting for Baker Mayfield and what I mean when I talk about he's got to be as efficient as he was. He was 10 of 12 for 145 and three touchdowns when throwing at or beyond the first down marker. That's an 83.3% completion percentage. And on passes of 10 or more yards, he was 5 of 7 for 105 and 2. That's what the Liam Cohen offense has brought to the Bucs in addition to those threats that I mentioned in Jalen McMillan and Bucky Irving. They really open up a whole slew of different options for Baker and that Liam Cohen offense is kind of a spinoff of what Detroit just saw against the Rams last week. Now, something else that I noticed that kind of parallels between the two Baker Mayfield on Sunday only ran play action four times. He was two of four of Matt Stafford's 51 dropbacks against Detroit. They only ran play action seven times. So I don't expect a lot of play action in this game. It's going to be straight up. Liam's going to call some plays. Baker's going to put him in the best position and they are going to go. As far as Chris Godwin, he's in that Cooper Cup role in Liam Cohen's offense. He's back in the slot. He had eight targets for eight receptions, 83 yards. Five of his eight receptions came on third down and resulted in a first down. You go back to Sunday, Cooper Cup. 14 receptions on 21 targets for yeah. 110 and one. That's going to be Chris Godwin in this game. Not 21 targets, no. but that's going to be the role that he plays. And that's how the Bucks offense is going to continue to move the ball down the field and try to put themselves in a position to score. As for Amon Ra, he is one of the best receivers in the NFL, bar none. He is absolutely phenomenal, and he had a bad game. Three catches for 13 yards. Goff and, and St. Brown are not going to let that happen again. No, no. So last year against the Bucks in the divisional round, 77 yards and a touchdown. But the two games combined, he had 20 receptions for 201 yards and two touchdowns. Amon Ra was the driving force for the Lions against Tampa. A beaten up secondary. No Antoine Winfield Jr. They have to find a way to contain Amon Ross St. Brown and force golf to look in other directions, force Jamison Williams to do it a second week in a row, challenge the run game to go against a very good Buccaneers run defense, or they have, you know, Gibbs and Montgomery as passing threats out of the backfield, but it starts with Amon Ra. If you can keep him to the same stat line that the Rams did, you have a chance to win this game. Yeah, I mean, you and I agree. I don't think that's happening. And I mean, not that stat line. I mean, maybe <laughs> right, that, right. <laughs> uh, three at 13 was a, a, an anomaly, but you oh, give yeah. the Rams credit. They took him away. I'll say this for the Lions. You know, what we saw in overtime Sunday night, eight plays in that final drive that ended in the M Montgomery touchdown, seven runs. Get mm -hmm. back to that a little bit. I No one loves Jameer Gibbs more than me, and 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 he's, he's fantastic. But there's got to be a way that David Montgomery gets more touches consistently in this game. I thought they went away from him too much third and fourth quarter. And then, Oh, over time. Well, we need to pound the rock and they, and they go there. So that'll keep Baker and that explosive bucks offense off the field. If they're running the football and they're getting some chunks with Montgomery, I think it was last year in Tampa. Montgomery was, was eating for a while and doing well and then got hurt in that game. Um, so stays healthy and does his thing. I think that'll be a key. You mentioned something I had written down. If Chris Godwin is in that Cooper Cup role, the Lions have got to find a way. If Godwin's playing that motion game uh, that, that they did with Cup to 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 find him, I think the Lions' pass defense did a good job for the most part. There weren't a lot of explosive plays, chunk plays for the Rams. But if you're telling me that uh, the new uh, OC down at Tampa's has a little Sean McVay in him, 
then he's going to watch that film and say, wow, let's put our guys in motion. Maybe Godwin turns into cup and that can't happen if the lions want to win. Um, and, and the third key is, is I think long fields for Baker with this crowd, what's going on to Ford field right now. And I know bucks fans heard it last year. It's insane. I mean, it is like a, I mean, it's, it's, it's a rock concert. It's everything. It's, it's, it's craziness. And Jack Fox continues to be a huge key for the lions, booming punts. You have Baker a long field. He's got to go 90 yards. And I know now with this silly new kickoff rule, everything's at the 30, it seems like, but let, let's see Baker start at the five and have to go 95 yards. Let's see that, that Bucks offense a couple of times, the flip field, Jack Fox doing his thing, crowd into it could cause some disruption there. So I think those are a few things I think James, the Lions need to do. Yeah, I mean, four field is is no joke. David Harrison, the host of Locked On Commanders on this network, he and I were sitting about eight inches away from each other during that game. We were having to text one another in order to have a conversation because we could not hear. <laughs> it is it is loud, and I know the Bucks have been working on trying to simulate, you know, the the uh, silent counts and 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 try to simulate the crowd noise you cannot replicate i have been to a lot of concerts in my life and my ears have never rung as much as they did leaving ford field after that game it is electric and i love it for lions fans man they have suffered for far too long yeah. i love that the crowd gets so amped up and, and they have a team that they can can love and and cheer on that much I think the Lions are going to win this football game. I think, like you said before, I see a shootout. I think that, you know, Baker and that Bucks offense and some of the new backs, and uh, I don't think the Lions defense will be terrible, but I, I think Tampa's going to, going to have some success. So I could see a 37-31 type of game here where, again, it's on that number. Vegas has, and our friends at FanDuel have it at six and a half. I could see a 37-31 game here where the Lions prevail. I think St. Brown will bounce back. Um, and I think some of that rust will be off uh, of the Lions. What, what do you say? Yeah, that that line's moved a little bit because it was at seven. So now it's it's come down just a little bit. I think the Bucks cover, but with all these injuries, especially Antoine and then Kalijah Cansey, that's the other really, really big one that affects the Bucks' ability to rush the passer. I don't know if they have the horses to be able to pull off an, an upset in Detroit, I think it's going to be close. And, and like I said, I truly believe that this is not the last time you and I are going to speak in the 2024 season. I think these two are destined to meet each other again wow. in the playoffs, but I could see this one being 35, 31, uh, you know, 37, 35. Like it, it's, it's going to be tight and it's going to be high scoring hammer the over. But I, <laughs> I just, I don't think the bucks get this one done. James was fun as always, my friend. Uh, good stuff. Thanks again. Yep. Thank you. Always a pleasure talking to you and, and talking Bucks Lions. You know it, James Yarko locked on Bucks. Check him out wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, subscribe and watch on the uh, locked on Bucks YouTube channel. Matt Derry here locked on Lions, Lions and Bucks Sunday at one Friday shows tomorrow.